<laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Adam Ratliff with Adam So Fun. And no, I did not forget about you in the December quilt along. I've been busy. Um, this is part three of the quilt along. I did supply paper piecing patterns for you, but um, if you have the V-block trimmer, from Studio 180 Designs. This is the ruler I, I used. I love this ruler. People have been messaging me um, that they got it for this and they, they just love it. They thought it was very easy and um, the blocks can be used in so many different ways. So the V block trimmer, all the links are below. Hit, hit up my friend Kimberly Flanagan. She's a certified instructor for them and she will hook you up if you give her the code ASF10. Again, uh, her email's below so you can send her an email. So this is the layout I did. A little bit different than what I thought I was going to do. I wanted to do something different. Um, I feel like this this made me think of kind of snowflakes so the snowflakes are going to be falling pieced and then i'm going to stitch the same pattern throughout the quilt kind of like falling snowflakes um, i bought this really beautiful thread at houston this year this is called scanfill it's a extra long staple pima cotton um it's organic from the netherlands I don't know, but this is a 30 weight. I wonder if I can, I haven't even opened it yet. Um, I just, I want to try it out. We were, uh, it showed up on one of the long arms at Houston and then we went over and played with some and I ended up buying some cause you know me in thread cause I wanted to try it out. Um, but it's a 30 weight. So it's going to be thicker than, you know, our, um, Omni or King Tut. Um, just to saw it just has a it has a really nice sheen to it and I think I might use this to stitch but now that I see it on my blue I think I'm not going to use this to stitch um, I thought it would look a little bit different let me check this one I, ooh. weirdly enough I also have a pink but the pink on the blue it does read white I might use the pink one. I like the idea of a 30 weight thread uh, because I'll be able to see the stitching very, very nicely. Um, I also might, I don't know, I, I might do a lot of stuff. You know what I'll do? You'll know what I do whenever it gets done. How about that? Um, these two don't fit together. <laughs> there you go, there you are. Oh. oh, I like took the packaging in half. Oh no, that one came apart. Does that right? No, I took the packaging in half. How weird. Sorry, uh, I digress. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to stitch different, uh, or stitch the designs going throughout the quilt. Um, today's video, we're going to play in designer. I want to talk about, you know, how I pull inspiration from this into different quilting options. Um, I show you how to create the blocks or like the stars themselves. Uh, if you wanna do that, maybe you wanna stitch just triangles kind of falling down, that might look good too. Um, I show you how to make an edge to edge and do an edge to edge using that triangle shape as the inspiration. So it's just, it's plain in designer. I talk about how you can use designer to help you if you have a pro stitcher light and maybe you don't have 12 um, inches of throat space left because you've advanced a little bit. So there's a lot to cover. Um, so we're gonna do this. We'll have this video and then the next video will be me, me quilting it however I decide to do it. Um, it's not loaded yet, so I still get to change my mind. But as always, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you're notified when new videos drop. Uh, I'm going to be doing a big giveaway at the beginning of 2023, so you want to make sure you're following the channel so you see that. And without any further ado, let's jump into that video, or let's jump into the digitizing. All right, everybody, here we are. We are in Pro Stitcher Studio, aka Pro Stitcher Designer. Um, it's Studio just because it also has Pro Stitcher Catalog. Um, and that gives you the find feature. I'm not gonna do any of that. What I wanna do, I'm gonna go to my view tab. I wanna turn my grid on. It's cause I wanna be able to see, I'm just using my mouse wheel to scroll in and out. And um, I kind of do things, a lot of quick keys and stuff. I'm gonna try not to do that when I'm working in this today. So you can see what I'm doing and where to click. But there are a list of quick keys that I believe you can download from ProStitcher.com. If not, they will be in the manual. 
So uh, just in case this is your first time looking at this, if um, you're looking at a quick key, a quick key is a if I hit like the letter L. And if I come over here to line, it will show that there's an L in parentheses. That is the quick key for that. So for pencil, P. For arc, it's A. For curve, it's C. For bezier, it's B. Um, so if I come down here and I hit L, my cursor turns into the line tool, and then I can click around and do my lines. We're going to be working with lines today. Um, I say that I can digitize a straight line like nobody else. I'm probably the best. Like if you need a diamond, I'm the best diamond digitizer on the earth. But if you put a curve into that, I'm just going to pay someone for the most part. Um, but I want you to get used to um, using this Pro Stitcher Designer because it's a great tool if you have it. If not, contact your retailer. You can get a discount code from them. If they look at you like you're crazy, message me. I'll get you a discount code. Um, but go to your retailer first. Some of them also have um, a box that you can actually purchase a, a physical copy. Most people just download it if they don't have that, though. Um, so let me see. I'm going to come in here. I've taken a picture or a screenshot of the quilt. So I'm going to come, we're going to use our backdrop tool today because we're going to talk about different ways we can quilt this and create those designs to quilt this more importantly. So I'm going to hit my backdrop tool and I'm going to say select and I need to go to my images file pictures. I don't think it's pictures. Yep, there it is. So here's my screenshot. I will post this screenshot. Um, online. I'll put it in on my Facebook. I'll, I'll also put it in the blog. I'm not going to do a whole blog post about this. Um, I might take some screenshots as I go and then post about that. But um, this is all more practical now. You don't really need the pattern because it's done. So um, I'm going to open this. Um, all right. I'm going to go to my view tab. So I've opened my backdrop. I've opened a picture of the quilt. I'm going to go to my view tab. I'm going to turn the grid off even though I just turned it on. So here's my backdrop. It's very pixelated. That's okay. I'm not worried about that. This is just going to be a way so we can audition some designs and see what things might look good. Um, we know that the width of this quilt is 38 inches. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to turn my grid back on now. And I guess I don't really need the grid. I want a straight line. That might help. Um, I'm going to go back to my tools, I'm going to backdrop tool, and I'm going to click on define scale. And what this is going to let me do, you'll see my cursors are crosshairs. I'm going to click on one corner and pull this line straight across to the other corner. Trying to be as straight as I can. It's not perfectly straight, but that's okay. I'm going to let go of my, so I clicked on the left, held the button down, the left click. I'm going to let go. And it's going to say, what's the length? And this is going to be 38.5 because there's the extra half inch. I'm going to hit OK. And now it's made the quilt. I'm going to hit my space bar to zoom out. So now the quilt, if you look at all my measurements, or the quilt, the backdrop is the same size of my quilt. So if I zoom in, let me see, I'm going to hit Z to get my zoom tool. So I'm going to zoom in, and each of these blocks should be about one to one, one by one, because that's how they are on the quilt. It might not be perfect. Remember, we are just using this as our guideline. I'm gonna zoom out because that's a little bit crazy. It's also pretty pixelated, like the, the lines aren't very straight. You can take a picture of your quilt and do this with a picture. I just thought, hey, I already have the quilt on my screen. I'll just screenshot this. So let me see, preview. I'm gonna take the grid off. And there we are. I'm gonna hit space bar again. So here's my quilt. So the first time I looked at this, I, I like these stars. Remember, I feel like these are falling snowflakes. So we can recreate this pattern very, very easy if I, let's see, we're gonna zoom, let me see, I'm gonna zoom in like this so we can have, oh, I think that's too big, just kidding. Let's see if we can do this one. Oh, I turned the grid off. We need the grid back on. Um, so we know how big these blocks are. And this line basically just splits the two. So really the easiest way to do this is if you come over here, I'm gonna zoom in by a two by two block because we're gonna use this and make the small one. And then I can always make it bigger 
because I know how big those blocks are because we had one that ended at two, we had one that ended at four, we had one that ended at five, we had one that ended at seven, eight, 10, and 12. So I'm gonna go to my tools and I'm gonna click the line tool or I can hit the L button. I wanna start in the center because I want it to just go all the way around and continue. So I'm gonna right click on my ruler bar, so right click, and I wanna make sure snap to grid is um, on. I can also hit control seven, but I usually just right click and click snap to grid because that's gonna make it, when I put a point near a line, I can put it there, but if I go near an intersection, it pops it right into that intersection for me. So I want, I want those to be right in those intersections and it'll put the points together when I need them. So I just selected that and deleted. Now I'm gonna hit the L button and here's my center. So I'm gonna do this block, this block, this block, then this block. So I'm gonna click, there's my first point. We'll come over, up, down. First block is done and I'm just gonna continue because I want this to be a continuous stitch. Now yours might look a little bit different than mine. It depends on how you laid it out. I've been looking at the pictures that some of you have posted and you definitely did a different layout than mine. So do it how you laid yours out. So they look similar, unless you just don't care because then it doesn't matter. Because remember it's your quilt. So I've done, I'm gonna hit the Q button, which is kind of like hitting enter. I could hit right click or I can hit enter. And now here's my first design that I've digitized. It's a design, I can use it wherever I want. And now this can be my master design. I'm gonna zoom out. It's so small. It should, in theory, be the same size as this. But again, one of these is pixelated, one of them is not. So we can see the scale is a little bit big. So there's my, there's my first piece. I'm gonna put this up here so we can see it. All right, so now if I wanted to have one of each size, I can, I'm gonna hit Control, or I will just do it with the thing. I'll right click and I'm gonna hit copy, right click and hit paste. There we are. And now I have two. And um, I can also hit Control V, which will paste. And we know that I'm getting copies because over here on my sequence view, it, another one's gonna add up. So I'm gonna hit Control V and watch, we get number four. Control V, there's number five. Control V, there's number six. So now I have all six of those designs. Um, I might take this one and bring it down here. And I want this one, this is 12 by 12. So if I select the design, so we know it's selected because it has all the dots on it. Over here on our artwork sidebar, there's a transform box. I wanna um, maintain the ratio because I want it 12 by 12 and I'm just gonna add a one. And then I have to scroll this down because we have to hit apply. And now I have my 12 by 12 block. And I can do the same thing with all of these. It's selected, move it over, come up, and this one's 10. And because this is checked right here, it will automatically put them both. I can also move that screen down a little bit. There we go. And this one was eight. That's not two, I want an eight, apply. This was seven, apply. And five, apply, is that right? I'd have to look. I think it was five, two, five, seven, eight, ten, and 12. I think that's right, they look right. And now um, I'm gonna bring this over here. So these are all my designs, right? I'm gonna put them right here and I'm gonna control copy, control V because I'm gonna bring them on here. I wanna be able to see them a little bit better, especially for you. So I'm gonna select all these designs and I wanna change the color. If you haven't changed any of your settings, if you select the design and come down here to your color palette and right click, it will change the color of the designs you have selected. So these are the designs over here. And now I can use this as my way to lay out things. Cause you know, this is a picture of the quilt and maybe you just wanna stick these all the way all around this. Um, do you want to have more if we, you know, there's extra spaces, um, maybe I control, um, control C to control copy, control V to paste, put one up here. Oh my gosh, I'm loving this. Um, maybe I want 
this one, control copy, control C, control paste, control V, put one down here. Oh my gosh, I like this. And um, I actually really like how these are all sitting right now. Um, some fun things you can do. We can flip a design. So let's go over to modify and I'm gonna mirror this. And it's going to turn them the opposite way. And maybe I mirror a few of these, but not all of them. Um, we can rotate them. Does rotate 45? Yep. Maybe we rotate some of them just to give it some more interest. I don't like those two rotated in the same place. What if we rotate this one? Because so this rotated looks like it's tilting to the right, where this one's looking like it's tilting to the left. You can do a lot of stuff. I really like this. Oh my gosh. Um, this is not how I originally was going to do that. So um, here's one option. And then I would go and stitch this, stitch these out. I would also, uh, because you know me, I like rulers. I would do an echo around this and stitch this uh, maybe a quarter inch echo or a half inch echo, because I'm also going to stitch the ditch around these. Uh, maybe a quarter or a half inch echo around these blocks and our um, digitized blocks. So this is one thing we, this is one option that we can do. Um, I really like this option. I'm gonna, uh, let's just go to file new and we're gonna do another backdrop. I'm gonna bring in the same design. Um, maybe you're someone who is like, oh, I am not ever gonna be that person. I wanna define scale again. Uh, you're not a custom quilter and you don't want to, you want to do an edge to edge. Let's see, this is 80. We're going to say 38 because that works better. Space bar to zoom out. Um, so maybe you want to make something that might fit with this and do something with triangles or whatever, whatever it might be. So I'm going to work over off to the left. And again, let me, I'm going to bring in one of these because this is, this is our inspiration, right? I'll bring in a bigger one. The, de the design is our inspiration. So I'm working over here, zoom in. Um, the thing with an edge to edge, oops, is that when you're stitching an edge to edge, the beginning point and the end point have to be on the same plane. If those points are not on the same plane, then that edge to edge is never going to work. So if we're trying to create an edge to edge, maybe it's something with triangles. So let's see. Oh, I was like, where's my, where's my grid? I turned it off. Um, I'm going to try something. This is either going to work or it's not going to work. And I don't really care if it does or not because we're having fun. So here's a three by three. So I'm going to hit the line tool. I'm going to click here. Now I'm going to hit the line tool. And I'm going to create one um, diamond with the point. Oh, I turned snap to grid off. Escape. Right click, snap to grid. There we go. Um, I want the point of this diamond. We'll just make it four by four. One, two, three, four. There we go. One, two, three, four. Anyway, I want the point to be the intersection in and out. Now, let's say, I'm going to move my screen down a little bit. I'm going to bring, if I, oops, let's see how, let's undo, let's, let's do that again so I can tell you what I did. Uh, I'm going to try to, there we go. So if you left click on a ruler and you drag your finger down, it's going to give you a line, a horizontal line. Um, you can do them horizontally and vertically. And I want to bring that line, we'll put it right here so we can see it. So now you have this blue line coming across here. Um, that, as long as my start and my stop point are on this line, then I can do an edge, I can make, make it into an edge to edge. That's, the, that's the, the magic to an edge to edge. So let's try something. Let's do, um, I'm going to hit L for the line tool. My dog is going crazy behind me. And we're going we're gonna to go two inches left on the line from my point. I'm going to put a point up here. And then I'm going to 
click at the apex and go two inches to the right. So this would work as an edge to edge. Oh my gosh, I already like it. But right now it's three pieces. We have a right piece, a left piece, and a center piece. I'm gonna change them different colors um, just so we can see when things connect. So here's my three pieces. I'm gonna zoom into this point because this is the important part. I need to connect this first piece to the red, so the blue piece to the red or the pink, and then the pink to the green. So I'm gonna select my first piece, my blue. I'm gonna hold down control and select my second piece. The start and stop point are already in the same spot. The stop point of the blue and the start point of the red are in the same spot. So I'm gonna hit, um, or I'm gonna right click, utility, and I'm gonna hit connect. And we know that it worked because now everything is pink. Now if I select the pink part, hold control and hit the green part, everything's selected. I can see them on my side, on my sequence view, everything's con um, connected. Right click, utility, connect. And now I have one piece and we can see over here that I have one piece. So, uh-oh, space bar. When in doubt, space bar. I'm gonna hit zoom and zoom in. So here's my, here's my design, I'm gonna turn my grid off. And I'm gonna hit my select tool or I can hit Q, pick my design. Let's go to tools, repeats. And here are my repeats. So this is what it would look like as an edge to edge. And we can kind of set it up just like Pro Stitcher. We can change that distance. Oh, this is the wrong distance. Do you see how they're getting closer together? We don't want that. That's like the, the row gap. We want this gap to shrink. Maybe we want to offset, mirror every other row. Nope, let's flip every other row. Ooh, can we, I don't think we can do that here, but that's an option. That's another edge to edge we can play with. We'll come back to this. Um, let's see, offset every other vertical row. Nope, nope. That's not what I want. That was what I want, but we need to increase this gap down. So there's another design. There's a lot of things we can do with this, and this is just one design, okay? So there's a few things that I liked by hitting buttons. That I'm not, I'm not a big fan of this empty space, so I'm gonna hit cancel. And we like this design. Here's a design we have. We can save this. This is design number one. I'm gonna hit control copy, control paste. So control C, control V. I'll bring my design down. So here's my new, uh, my new piece. Um, Jen at Quiltable, she calls, she does this stuff and she'll work and she'll build off of designs and get inspiration from what she's doing and make more stuff. She calls these pages her chop shop and she'll zoom out and just have tons of designs in here. So this is our mini chop shop. Um, here's another option, let's see, because we had that space that we didn't like. And that space is the, between these two Vs that are gonna connect, so it's right here. So what if, I'm gonna view, turn my grid on. We're on a line, perfect. My snap to grid is on, so I'm just gonna move this so it's on a point on a main intersection, because that's gonna make it easier for me to see what I'm doing. And this was a four by four triangle, so I'm gonna hit the L for my line tool. I'm gonna select here, and I need to go one, two, three, four, and over two. Come over four, and back to my point. So there's my new piece. Now I'm gonna connect these together. So I'm gonna take my first one, hold the control button, take my second one, right click utility connect so here we have it so now this is design number two and if we go to preview or if we select it and we sorry go to tools repeat we want to do it point to point look now we have our second design that easy and i mean it's not hard it's just finding out what you want to do and how to make things work Let's offset every other row. Well, that's weirdly offset. 
let's offset every other row, not 50%, right there. I like that. Sometimes, we're gonna, we're gonna get crazy just to see what happens. What if we change this distance? These, these diamonds are crazy, but there's gonna be a lot of quilting there. Let's go farther. That looks cool. Um, and it's all just about spacing. Sometimes overlapping designs will give you something really cool. I think this is too busy personally, but um, you know, if we hit cancel, I like this design. There's our second one. I'm gonna come back to this one and I'm gonna hit repeat and we're gonna offset every other row and I'm gonna shrink this gap. What does this look like? Like, I like that. Not as busy because there's not as much stuff. And I was able to fill this gap in. That's kind of cool. What if we did it? Um, things that I would try not to do. Um, I would try not to have the designs come and meet exactly on top of each other right there. I don't like designs to actually hit because then you have to be really, really precise when you're doing your edge to edges and nothing can be off. So I give myself a little bit of a gap because if everything is a little is about a quarter inch, then if they hit, they, um, the, they never hit, they don't have to hit. But because of that, I don't like this empty space. I'm gonna hit cancel and pick up this one and just show you the difference between these two designs. If we do point to point and I shrink them up so that they're close to hitting, but not really hitting. Looks much better this way because it's, um, there's nothing to interact with each other. They don't have to touch. All right, so um, we wanna see how this is gonna work as an edge to edge, but the first thing I wanna do, I'm gonna hit Z for zoom and zoom in. I wanna see how this is gonna stitch out. So I'm gonna select my design. Let's take my grid off. So here's my design. I'm gonna say preview. We wanna to switch to stitches. And now I have the stitch out. I'm gonna hit stitch out, we get our little bar. Um, I've turned it all the way up and I hit the arrows. And this is stitching from the right to the left. Some designs will do that. I wouldn't do that with straight lines. You're probably gonna have your thread shred um, just because the machines like to go left to right better. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and hit my select tool, pick this, and we can come and pop over to tools and it's as easy as hitting the swap button. So I'm gonna hit swap. Now I'm gonna go back to preview, stitch out, and I always like to see the stitch out before I do anything else. So there's my design. I'm gonna select it. I am going to come over here and hit, just hit file and save. Um, control copy, so control C. I'm gonna move my screen down some. Control V, oops, there we go. And so now I'm just made a copy of this because this is the one I want to use as my um, repeat. I'm gonna come over here and let's turn this one back to artwork. So this is gonna be my repeat. So I'm gonna go to modify, or I actually tools, repeat. We want point to point. Uh, we'll say I want six across and like 13 down, I guess 12 down. We wanna offset every other row. And I'm gonna shrink this, I think maybe to 40 looks good. I'm gonna increase my vertical distance because I don't want the points to actually touch. And there's my edge to edge design. I'm gonna hit apply. Um, actually, let's do this to like 20. Yeah, I like that. And then I'm gonna hit apply. I'm gonna hit okay. And here's my edge to edge design. Before we do anything, because all of these are pieces, kind of like we haven't baselined yet, I'm gonna right click on the white because I want this to be white so we can see it on the red and then I can pull it over and drop it off on my quilt and that's how this is going to look we'll zoom in on my quilt I love this I think an edge to edge design on this quilt just this edge to edge design I just love I think it's just really easy very modern we made it super quick um, if we wanted to see it stitch out we can go to preview stitch out I have it turned up and it will do our stitch out. Um, it's making designs and creating a designer is very easy, but you have to practice. You just have to give your time 
or yourself some time to see how things are going to go and how things are going to work. Um, and, you know, it's just a few little tips and tricks. You know, ProStitcher.com has um, the the des- ProStitcher designer drop down and it will help you with a lot of stuff. I have my diving into designer series on my YouTube channel that you can go and watch um, just to see diving into designer kind of shows you how some of the buttons work and some of the things that you like. Now, let's say, oh my gosh, I love this. This is the one I want. These are all pieces. So what I would do is I would pull a piece out. I'm going to hit Control Copy. And then I'm going to come up to hit File New. This is a new page. I'm going to um, paste it. Instead of Control V, I'm just right clicked. And I'm going to hit Paste. I'll turn it black so we can see it. This is the design I want. Now I'm going to save this. Um, its stitches are already assigned. We know that it's stitching the right way. I'm not going to save my whole edge to edge. I only want to save one design. Everything else we can do in Pro Stitcher and it's uh, with our area and probably make it a little easier there. Um, so I'm going to hit File, Save As, and then this is my um, December 2022 Snowflake. Snowflake E to E. Um, this wants to save it as this inspiration series. This is the um, Pro Stitcher Designer file type. I'm going to hit this drop down and I want to save it as an HQV file because that is going to let me save this as um, an, the edge to edge file that I can actually stitch out and hit save. And now I have my design. I can stick this onto a USB stick put it in my machine and stitch that edge to edge out if you wanted to do that. If you're gonna use these, um, really, you can save one of them. So let's just say I wanna save the big one. I'm gonna, again, control copy. So control C, I'm gonna open a new page. I'm gonna control V to paste this. I need to assign stitches. Let's watch this one stitch out really quick. It should be pretty easy. Perfect. We like the way it looks. So I'm going to say file, save as. This can be um, December 2022 snowflake block. In this, and I'm going to hit. I'm going to put 12 because this is the 12 inch block. Again, I'm going to hit my drop down, HQV. So it's a HQV file. We can see we have one other here and save. So now this one's saved. Now, if you have a, we're gonna come back to this one really quick and I'm gonna view my backdrop. If you wanna do something like this and you have a Moxie or you have a 16, um, if depending on where the, your 12 inch block is, you might not still have 12 inches at the bottom of this quilt to be able to quilt this out. Um, it might work here, it's gonna be tough. You're gonna be pretty close. So what you can do is just stitch out half of it. And you'll know where this start and stop is because it's the center. So if I was using this, this, and I wanted to, let's say we've created this block. Let me turn on my grid. Uh, I think this might be too big. There we are. So I'm going to move this over here. And um, let's see, this is a six by six unit. Actually, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do like a four by four because I can see the grid a little bit easier. Let's see. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, so here's my four by four block. And so I'm going to hit L for line. And I'm going to come one. There's four inches. There's the center of my top in here. And I can come to the top. Here's my center. Here's my right. Enter. There's my four by four inch block. I can assign stitches, save this design. So file, save as. This is my December, we wanna save as HQV. This is gonna be my December 2020 snowflake block. Half four. Oh, this would be actually be half of an eight inch block because it's gonna be ending eight. Save. So now when you stitch this on Pro Stitcher, uh, let me turn my grid off. We're going to stitch half of this. You'll advance. 
you can at duplicate it, you can open another one. So I'm gonna pretend I duplicated it. So it stuck it right on top of itself. The duplicated one will turn pink. So now I have a pink one, but I also have one right under it. Oh, I picked up the new one, whatever. Um, so we've stitched out, we'll say we stitch out the pink. We need to stitch out this, but first we wanna to come to our tools uh, or modify. We wanna rotate it or flip it or however you like. I usually use rotate and now, uh-oh, and do that. We're going to put this one right here. And in um, Pro Stitcher, what we're going to do is you're going to use your reposition. You're going to put your needle right here, right where it started and ended. You're going to pick your new design and you're going to hit reposition start point. And it will pop and put that design right where you need it. And now you can stitch in your second half. So it's really easy to split stuff up. So for those of you with Pro Stitcher, uh, with Pro Stitcher Lite. Pro Stitcher Designer is a great tool because you can help you create um, smaller motifs or break motifs up where you might be able to stitch half and half. So those are just two, two options to do this. Um, I love this edge to edge. Uh, with this kind of design, I would probably just do straight line quilting in the middle of it. Uh, you can use your channel locks. You can use your low-tech channel locks, the little pieces that pop onto your wheels. Uh, you can do a free motion design behind it. Um, like I said, I'm gonna echo around everything. I'll probably just use a ruler because I'm pretty quick and I can use my um, stitch a straight line and then echo around everything while I'm doing my straight line quilting back and forth. So um, I can't wait to see what you all do and we will see you back here in a second. All right, everyone. So that was a little bit of fun in Pro Stitcher Designer. Um, like I said multiple times in the video, you have to play with it. You can't get good at it if you don't ever use it. So give yourself some time, uh, maybe, you know, a half hour once a week or um, even be better yet, a half hour every day. Just get in there, do something, draw some squares, draw some triangles, use the arcs and do a little bit of different things. Uh, remember, you can watch the plane and uh, or, uh, diving into designer series if you want to get to learn it a little bit more. I'll also link that um, series, that playlist down below. Um, I just, again, I can do a straight line like no other, but if there's a curve, I'm going to pay for it. I'm going to have someone else do it. Uh, but no, I think some of you would have the ability to become really good digital designers yourself. Um, so you got to play that edge to edge design. I can go off and sell if I wanted to, um, but I just showed you how to make it. So why would I sell it? You know me, give it free, but I can't wait to see how you all quilt yours. Um, after you see how I quilt mine, no, I'm just kidding. Um, because I've been, you've been posting them. I'm so excited to see everybody's quilts. Thank you for posting. Thank you for participating. And we will see you in the next video of stitching this baby out. Bye.